Hello and welcome to the third of our Big Wednesday uh, video pods where we look at the readings for the third Sunday of Lent and what an interesting lot they are and I hope you've had a chance to read through them. Um, there's an awful lot to digest really. Um, but before we get stuck into those, um, a little fess up from me about my early student days. Frankly, I found Old Testament theology and literature really quite difficult, and that was even without the challenging task of attempting uh, the language in which the uh, Old Testament was written. The Old Testament was also known as the Hebrew Bible, and uh, I really, really struggled with learning Hebrew. Um, but it was only later that I realised that every bit as useful, for me anyway, was an atlas to see where these places are, to see what they were called then, and to see what they're called now. Many of the places that we read about in the Bible have the same name, some are different, uh, and just because a place is really difficult to pin down doesn't mean that things didn't happen there, and that the accounts of them are inaccurate or false in Scripture. Uh, but we do sometimes have to make guesses about where such and such an event may have taken place. Um, and this is true of Abraham. It's also certainly true of Moses, although we've got a bit more idea about Moses because there's more evidence uh, to suggest that uh, Moses well, really existed, but there's a lot of uh, evidence from, from other, other cultures. <clears throat> he almost certainly had a very, very important role in the Egyptian court. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> now, if I have some homework to ask of you, uh, maybe do a search of the places mentioned in the Exodus passage and in the Gospel passage. The places mentioned in the psalm are the same as those in Exodus. Now it should be quite clear that the readings are linked by the theme of water, seen literally and metaphorically. And I don't believe it's ever a bad thing to reflect on the functions of water, just as we do when we have a baptism service. Water is life-giving, we can't last without it for very long, but water also takes away life when it comes in devastating, uncontrollable forms such as a flood, which in ancient times were, uh, the floods were interpreted as, as God's wrath. And the prayer over the water within the baptism service reminds us of the relationship between God and humankind as a means of life and of liberation, if we're obedient to God's calling, unlike those, say, who jeered at Noah, uh, who perished therefore in the flood, because they were disobedient to that command. Now Lent is also regarded as a wilderness time. Uh, that ties in quite neatly with the Exodus reading. It's a wilderness time when we try to retreat from the materialistic, in human existence. And in a literal wilderness, water may be very hard to find. And once found, its safety, uh, safety to drink might be unknown, risky to try. Now, in our Lenten wilderness, and at other times, where we might feel uncertain and vulnerable, we know that we can always drink of the water of life, of which Jesus speaks in that exchange with the Samaritan woman at Sychar. Now, Samaritans were people who were at odds with the Jews because they did not share the primacy of Mount Zion, where the temple was. For them, Gerizim is where God dwells. However, look at this Samaritan and a woman at that. She's able quickly to think beyond the literal, in contrast to poor old Nicodemus last week, uh, who was just so obsessed with rules and regulations and, and thinking logically and literally that he couldn't ascertain what Jesus was going on about. It, being born from above was uh, problematic for him, but the Samaritan woman realised that this water was not H2O as we know it now, but actually Jesus himself. You see, Jesus the Jew is not just for those within, 
if you like, the rule-obsessed Jewish clique. Indeed, he's precisely not for people like that because they're not ready for the openness, uh, which means, to paraphrase St Paul, we receive the living water which is poured into our hearts. Now, I can't be sure that the Jacob's Well I visited on pilgrimage a few years ago is the same as the one mentioned in the reading. The Jacob is certainly the one as in Jacob and Sons, think Joseph and his amazing Technicolor dream coat, uh, which, meant, uh, which means that the sites referred to are, are very, very ancient indeed, uh, and quite possibly not far in the case of Jacob's Well from the scene of the Old Testament reading. You'll find if you ever go to the Holy Land, the distances between these places are really, really quite small. It's not a very, very large area of land at all. So let's remember that Jacob uh, was uh, Abraham's grandson, because Jacob's father was Isaac, the son that Abraham nearly, uh, but was prevented from sacrificing, uh, because, ironically, because of his obedience to God's command. Now today, the well, Jacob's well, would be, would be described as being on the outskirts of Nablus, which when I visited in 2017 was then a very, very vibrant Palestinian town, largely free of the problems we see and read about. Uh, it's been much more bedeviled by violence, sadly, in recent weeks. The violence between the ancient Arab community and the Israeli settlers. The water I drank was very refreshing, slightly brackish though, but refreshing nevertheless. The well is very, very deep, and the water there is now drunk by pilgrims from all over the world, regardless of any doctrinal differences there may be between them and the present-day custodians of the site, the Greek Orthodox. However, there are religious tensions as there were religious tensions in Jesus' time. Nothing new. Now then, as now, the religious part for some people of those apparent differences are nothing more than a fig leaf to hide bigotry and tri tribalism. These are things we need to avoid. Now Jesus' wisdom and authority transcend all this, and elsewhere in other and in other Gospel accounts, Jesus illustrates the way forward sometimes is to follow the examples of those who are outside the restrictive cliques of the established or official religion of the day. Now this can lead us to some uncomfortable places. It may be very counterintuitive to follow people from the outside, but we're not, as those on the inside, the repository of good practice. Look how the Israelites moan where Moses led them. But has Moses really led them? And if he has, he certainly has some questions about it. But he responds by obeying the command anyway. Uh, but is Moses not God's agent? Well, it's God's way is milk and honey every time. So it's God that actually is the person instigating this activity, using human agents such as Moses, which take us to difficult places. So scroll forward to the fanfares and even fawning directed at Jesus uh, during Holy Week. These soon morph into much rougher treatment, but this is all part of God's plan. As we read in the passage from St Paul today, suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. So, actually, the last word goes to the Samaritan woman. Give me this water, that I may never be thirsty. In the description box below, you'll find some links to some images that may help you to locate these accounts and make them seem a bit more real for you. Uh, and there'll be some links also to some music to help you th take your thoughts higher and hopefully to the living water also. So we move into night prayer 
or Compline, and I've introduced you, I think, to the app, uh, which is Daily Prayer, Church of England Daily Prayer, where you can select the date and the form of the service you want to follow or to read. And today is the order for night prayer for Wednesday the 8th of March. This happens to be the commemoration of Edward King, a Bishop of Lincoln, who died in 1910, who was known for his great wisdom, um, his controversy for wearing vestments that smacked of what was known as ritualism. But most particularly, he was known for his incredible pastoral kindness in visiting prisoners at Lincoln Jail, and in fact, on one occasion, uh, baptising an inmate and confirming him shortly before this inmate was due to be executed. It's also the feast day of Ed, uh, Felix, the uh, Bishop of the East Angles, as in Felix Stowe and St Felix School, and it, also the commemoration of Geoffrey Studdard Kennedy, who was a First World War padre, known uh, uh, to all the troops there um, as a great inspiration uh, and uh, brave leader of people in very, very different, uh, difficult, difficult times. His name, by the way, was Woodbine Willie. So we just centre ourselves, as I need to centre myself, before we enter into night prayer for this evening. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We reflect on our day and those places where we've met God in places and people. And we reflect on those times when we've been too occupied with our own preoccupations to find God in the places where we are and the people we have met. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we've sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we fail to do. Forgive us our sins. Heal us by your Spirit, and raise us new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Before the ending of the day, Creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night. Tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. The psalm to which we've become accustomed is Psalm 139, and there's a brief pause at the little diamond, but then we go on fairly swiftly into the following verse. O Lord, you search me out and know me. You know my down sitting and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my journeys and my resting place. And are acquainted with all my ways. For if there is not a word in my tongue, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot attain it. Where then can I go then from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning, 
and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. Even there your hand shall lead me. Your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night, even darkness is no darkness with you, the night is as clear as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are your works, my soul knows well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes beheld my form as yet unfinished. Already in your book were all my members written, as day by day they were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How deep are your counsels to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I count them, they are more in number than the sand. And at the end, I am still in your presence. Creator God, may every breath we take be for your glory. May every footstep show you as our way, that trusting in your presence in this world, we may be on this life, still be with you, where you are alive and reign for ever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Reading from Isaiah Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is not to share your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Christ died for us so that, whether we wake or sleep, we might live with him. Now, Lord, let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Christ died for us, so that whether we wake or sleep, we might live with him. We offer our prayers and thanksgivings to God our Father in heaven, knowing that he is the provider of the water of life, the ground of our being, our sustainer, redeemer and friend. We pray first for the world. Which proceeds pell-mell, often disregarding the values that underpin creation of wholesomeness of the need for refreshment and continual renewal we pray for peace particularly between Ukraine and Russia we pray for good government in this and every nation for his majesty King Charles III for the High Court of Parliament and for His Majesty's most loyal opposition. We pray for those finding life very difficult at the moment, with rapidly rising prices, 
those falling between the cracks of just about managing and in dire need of support from additional benefits. At this time of Lent to Wilderness for us all, we spend a brief moment in self-examination. Laying before God the concerns we have for our physical bodies. We lay before God any uncomfortable patterns of thought we may have. We pray for all those in our much lauded but greatly stressed national health system. We pray for all who exercise a ministry of cure, particularly unpaid and unsung, and for junior carers tasked at a young age with care for their parents. And at this time of reflection and repentance, begun on Ash Wednesday, we reflect on our mortal selves, that dust we are and to dust we shall return. We think of those we love but don't see anymore, and celebrate all the things that were good in their lives. And we pray the Holy Ghost, the Parakeet, will be with those who will die this day suddenly or unprepared. God of peace, who gave such grace to your servant Edward King, that whomever he met he drew to Christ, fill us, we pray, with tender sympathy and joyful faith, that we also may win others, and show the love that passes knowledge through him who is the shepherd and guardian of our souls. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and for ever. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace, and may your blessings be always upon us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the Lord's Prayer in the traditional form. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. Come with the dawning of the day and make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. May God bless us, that in us may be found love and humility, obedience and thanksgiving, discipline, gentleness and peace. I bid you well in any researches you want to make and I hope that you uh, find the additions uh, to this uh, video podcast down in the description box useful and um, I will also post a copy of this text uh, in the downloadable box associated with the video and I hope you found that helpful. So until next time, good night. <laughs>